The human brain alone contains about 100 billion nerve cells, called neurons. A neuron, like every other cell, has positively and negatively charged ions, inside and outside. Further, a resting neuron has a greater negative charge on the inside surface of the plasma membrane and a greater positive charge on the outside surface. This partitioning of charge creates a voltage difference across the membrane known as the resting membrane potential, which can be measured using a voltmeter. On average, an intracellular electrode records a value of minus 70 millivolts. The resting membrane potential depends on two factors. First, it depends on the presence of sodium and potassium gradients across the plasma membrane. Specifically, there are more sodium ions outside the neuron than inside, and more potassium ions inside the neuron than outside. Second, the resting membrane potential depends on the differential permeability of the plasma membrane to sodium and potassium ions. Leak channels in the plasma membrane allow sodium and potassium ions to diffuse or leak down their concentration gradients. The membrane contains many more potassium leak channels than sodium leak channels. Thus, the membrane is much more permeable, or leaky, to potassium ions. As positively charged potassium ions leak out of the neuron, the inside surface of the membrane becomes negatively charged compared to the outside surface. If potassium was the only ion moving, the potential would stabilize at minus 90 millivolts. However, positively charged sodium ions leak into the neuron, which slightly offsets the negative charge, and raises the voltmeter reading to minus 70 millivolts. Sodium-potassium pumps actively transport sodium ions out of the neuron and potassium ions back in, compensating for the sodium and potassium leaks. Thus, the pumps help to maintain the resting membrane potential. Neurons send signals over long distances by generating and propagating action potentials. Most action potentials originate near the axon hillock of the cell body in the initial segment of the axon. It then travels the entire length of the axon. A closer look reveals that during an action potential, voltage-gated channels open and close altering the permeability of the plasma membrane to sodium and potassium ions. A threshold stimulus changes the shape of the voltage-gated sodium channels, causing their activation gates to open. This event marks the beginning of phase 1 of the action potential, known as depolarization. As sodium ions diffuse into the axon, the membrane potential becomes less negative. This causes more voltage-gated sodium channels to open, and the membrane potential soars to plus 30 millivolts. At this point, two key events occur. The inactivation gates of voltage-gated sodium channels close, and voltage-gated potassium channels open. These two events mark the beginning of phase two of the action potential known as repolarization. As potassium ions diffuse out of the axon, the membrane potential becomes negative again. However, the membrane potential continues in the negative direction going beyond the resting state of minus 70 millivolts. This marks the beginning of phase 3 of the action potential, known as hyperpolarization. During this phase, voltage-gated potassium channels close and all voltage-gated sodium channels are released from inactivation. By the end of this phase, ions move through leak channels only and the membrane potential returns to the resting state of minus 70 millivolts. The neuron is now ready to fire another action potential.
Summary Generation of an action potential A threshold stimulus Opens voltage-gated sodium channels Sodium ions diffuse into the axon Depolarizing it to plus 30 millivolts Voltage-gated sodium channels close and voltage-gated potassium channels open. Potassium ions diffuse out of the axon, repolarizing it to a negative value. The membrane potential briefly hyperpolarizes. Voltage-gated potassium channels close, and the membrane returns to the resting state of minus 70 millivolts. Action potentials propagate in a continuous fashion in unmyelinated axons. Once an action potential is generated in the initial segment of the axon, it propagates the entire length of the axon. Recall that a threshold stimulus causes voltage-gated sodium channels to open. The influx of sodium ions generates an action potential. It also establishes a depolarizing current that flows to the next segment and brings it to threshold. Voltage-gated sodium channels open, regenerating the action potential in this segment of the axon. Current flows from this segment and depolarizes the next segment to threshold, thus regenerating the action potential yet again. In this way, regeneration continues in one direction all the way down to the axon terminals. The basis for unidirectional propagation is revealed when we take a closer look. By the end of the depolarization phase of the action potential, all voltage-gated sodium channels inactivate and voltage-gated potassium channels open. These two events render this segment of the axon temporarily insensitive or refractory to another depolarizing stimulus. However, voltage-gated sodium channels in the downstream segment are closed and receptive to a depolarizing stimulus. Thus, propagation occurs sequentially down the axon to the axon terminals. In myelinated axons, action potential propagation is a bit different. Here they propagate in a saltatory or leaping fashion. The myelin sheath consists of multiple layers of tightly wrapped glial cell membrane. But this sheath is not a continuous one. Exposed areas of axonal membrane, known as nodes of Ranvier, occur at discrete intervals. Voltage-gated sodium channels are abundant in the nodes, but largely absent between nodes. So, action potentials are regenerated at each node, not in areas covered by the myelin sheath. However, the myelin sheath does provide the insulation necessary for the rapid spread of depolarizing current. And the sooner the nodes reach threshold, the faster action potentials propagate along the axon. Saltatory conduction is extremely fast. Velocities often exceed 100 meters per second. In contrast, continuous conduction is fairly slow. Velocities rarely exceed 2 meters per second. Nevertheless, both continuous and saltatory conduction propagate action potentials over varying distances because action potentials regenerate along the way. Summary Propagation of an action potential. Once generated, the action potential propagates the entire length of the axon without decrement.